Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today I'm gonna to find out if I can use one of these, a Raspberry Pi Zero, in combination with this bag of parts to make a cycle exact, real-time emulator of one of these. Let's see how it goes. This project is made possible because of the work on the Pi 1541 project started by Steve White. And as you can see, I'm a little late to the party because this has been going on since about 2018. I remember back in 2020, my neighbor, Retro Combs, got one of these pre-assembled Pi 1541 type adapters. And I didn't even get around to ordering a kit for one until about 2022. And it's been sitting in my project pile since then, waiting to get done. But I finally decided to give it a shot. All right, let's see what we got here. Got this Pi Zero. This is the original one without the wireless. I think I used it before because I see a little bit of solder on these GPIO ports on the headers so we'll be using that for this and here's this kit I got from eBay I will pop up over right now to show you the auction listing I think the guys the, the person still has them out there but this is a an open source design here it's the Pi 1541 IO adapter I'll put a URL in the description for this on uh, GitHub. This is supposed to fully emulate a Commodore drive because you know there, there's some certain software and certain titles just do not seem to want to work right on the SDIEC or the uh, you know things like the Kung Fu cart. But this is like really, really fully emulating a Commodore drive. So let's check out some of the parts I just dumped out. So this is the IEC connectors there. A little piezo buzzer. This is the reset button. That's clearly a capacitor. There are five push buttons that mount sideways there. Got a green LED and a red LED. Got a little OLED I squared C display here. It makes the socket for the display an SN7406N. Got a couple other little headers here. A jumper, four different resistors. Two of them are 220 and two of them are 1K. So that's what we've got here. And I'm gonna probably just get to going. Now I'm gonna zoom in. There are some specific things you have to kind of jump ahead of time. Or you don't have to do it ahead of time. I'm going to do it ahead of time. All right, so here we are zoomed in. I was just going to show you on the back here. There are places where you have to kind of make some choices depending on how you want to do this build. And that's covered in multiple places uh, you can find online and with the documentation. So in this version 4 of the board, this PCB, it's uh, set up where it has some flexibility. Right here is where you select for your display, I think, if you want that to be on bus 0 or 1. And this is where you select if your display is a 5 volt or a three volt. This part right here is different models of this display will have different orders of these values on the thing here. See how this says ground, VCC, SCL, SDA. This is where you select which one's first. If it's a volt, if it's VCC, then ground, you jump both of them this way. If it's ground, then VCC, you jump both of these this way. If you have a 7406, you jump all these middle ones to the top here. The docs I looked at so far today, nothing referenced this, just these and this part. So I'm going to get on with doing these jumpers and I'll be right back. Actually, let's just go ahead and build this thing. Here I'm installing and soldering in the 7406 hex inverter. Here I'm installing and soldering in the IEC jacks. Here I'm installing our 1K and 220 ohm resistors. Here I'm installing and soldering the two LEDs. Here's the reset switch. This is the plug for the display. Here's the display going in place, checking out the fitment. This is the piezo buzzer speaker thing. The enable disable speaker jumper and external speaker connector. Here are the switches to interface with the Pi 1541 software. This is the socket that'll connect with the Raspberry Pi header pins. And 
here I'm soldering the headers on the Raspberry Pi Zero. And this is the first time I try to fit them together to see how things work. Okay, now that the hardware portion of the kit is complete, I want to talk about the software install configuration. The first thing you need is a formatted SD card. It needs to be formatted to FAT32. I assume you know how to do that and we'll look at the next steps here. And that's actually getting the latest binary package for the Pi1541. So in this case here you can see you can get that by clicking on this link which will give you a file that'll have everything you really need to put in the root of your SD card that you just formatted. And it will have a kernel.img file but if you're using a zero you can't use that one. So we'll also need to come back and get a kernel for the Pi Zero specifically. You'll also need a copy of the Raspberry Pi official firmware. You can get that from a zip file on the Pi 1541 site, or you can go grab and generate a zip from the latest from the Raspberry Pi Foundation's GitHub page. Next, you'll get a zip file for the Vice Simulator. That way you can go in and grab out a 1541 disk drive ROM file. You can also use a Jiffy DOS ROM file, but that's up to you to where and how you get that. There's also a Commodore font file you can get from the Vice zip file, but I didn't really bother with that because it's not compatible with the zero setup of Pi 1541 right now. But if you're using a three or something like that, you can give it a shot. And at this point, I have the following on my SD card. I have the bootcode.bin, fixup.dat, and start.elf from the Raspberry Pi official firmware, the 1541 folder, config.txt, kernel.img, and options.txt came from the original Pi 1541 zip I referenced at the beginning. The jiffy.bin is a ROM for the drive I'm putting in there, and like I said, you can get the 1541 from the Vice zip or Jiffy if you have a means to get it. I also made sure to copy in the kernel.img for the Pi Zero and not use just the default one, which is just for the three. For some of the Pi Zero specific tweaks, I checked out a video referenced on Steve White's page that shows some recommended settings for the config.txt, which is the Pi specific boot up stuff related to overclocking and so forth. And I just kind of copied what the guy did in his video. And subsequent searching around, I found where some folks seem to even go a little higher in frequency than this, but I have not tried that yet. Next, I worked on the options.txt file. One thing I made sure was the split lines equals one. If your adapter has dual IEC ports, like you're gonna daisy chain things, you need to have it like that. That's how this type B is usually set up. I also specified my LCD type and name there. And for my first runs, I believe everything else was as is. One thing referenced in the documentation is this particular version of Ghost and Goblins seems to be particularly good at showing if your hex inverter has any issues. So I made sure to grab a copy of that one. I also grabbed a copy of the C64 port of Fixit Felix Jr. because that's what I used to do my Jiffy DOS benchmarking last year. So I wanted to see how Jiffy DOS on the SDIEC compared to Jiffy DOS with the Pi 1541. So I queued up the disk image for Fixit Felix in the Pi 1541 interface here and loaded it up. And the result was just a little over 25 seconds, which is better than a minute and 25 seconds, but I thought that was a little bit slower than I'd had before with my SDIEC and Jiffy DOS. I went back and found that original clip and yeah, it was eight seconds, just shy of nine seconds basically for loading with Jiffy DOS on the SDIEC last year when I did some testing. So that's quite a bit slower on the 1541 running on the zero. I may circle back around to this later and see if I can improve that any. Next, I tried out the Ghost and Goblins file that everyone said to try out as it was like a true test of how things were working. So I gave that a shot and I was very bummed out. Multiple attempts, I ended up getting this garbage screen at the beginning that everyone said as an indicator of things not being great. After doing a bunch of searching around and looking, I kept running into multiple instances of folks saying if you have a zero to make sure that the sound is disabled. So I went back into the options file and disabled this GPIO and set it back to zero so it wouldn't even try to make any sounds at all. I think maybe some cycles get burned up trying to bit bang the GPIO to make those sounds and anything we can do to pull that out to give the zero a little more juice is probably better. So after tweaking that option, I tried again and tried a bunch more times, but this right here is an example of things working okay. The game loads on up. The start screen looks okay 
and you'll see here before we fade out that the uh, the game starts up and actually gets some gameplay started here and that seems to work okay with no problem so based on that i think that this is pretty good i think that the pi zero is probably right at the fringe of being having enough juice or not you got to make sure you turn off any extra options you do not need i believe for it to work the best i may try to clock it up a little bit more and see and i'm going to see if i can dig out a three somewhere because i want to compare especially i want to see if the load time's any better with that uh, fix it felix jr oh yeah and one more thing before i go if you use pi 1541 or have been using it or just want to be nice and support someone let's throw a little support towards uh, steve i think this is a great project and i can't wait to mess with it some more um, you can donate to him via paypal or get on his patreon i'm gonna go donate right now hey if you made it this far Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.